Adam Finkelstein here to break down their winners and losers as we leap towards March. Jerry, biggest loser, Nebraska on this day? Yeah, so far, it's definitely Nebraska. I mean, the problem for Nebraska's resume is they just can't win off their home floor. They're now 3-8 and eight on the season away from home. Killers at Nebraska. They, they beat everybody at home except Creighton. Creighton beat them there. But, you know, they just can't win away from home, and the NCAA tournament's played away from home. So... Nebraska is going to have to find a way if they really want to feel safe on Selection Sunday to beat somebody noteworthy off their home floor. The conference tournament provides opportunities for that as well because that's a neutral site event. Uh, but, you know, this this is a lost chance for Nebraska to get their best win away from home all season and still against a team that's not going to the NCAA tournament. Adam, you agree that it's Nebraska's yeah. the biggest loser? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. This would have been their fifth consecutive win, so they really had some positive momentum going into this game. As Jerry said, the, the big Achilles heel for them all year long has been their inability to win on the road. So given the momentum they came in with, I think in some of the struggles, obviously Ohio State going through that midseason coaching change, this was a big opportunity for Nebraska tonight. It might not bear out too much on the seating line. I'll leave that to Jerry, but I think certainly this was not what we expected from a team that has been playing really, really well and had a chance to build on that. So still think they're dangerous. They have too many guys and shoot it too well. Uh, they tend to live and die from behind the three-point line when the shots aren't going tonight. Then they die, especially when there is a plus-20 free-throw differential like there was this evening. Jerry, do they stay at that 10 seed? Yeah, for now they do, certainly. Um, it's not that bad of a loss. I mean, it's it's a loss, but it's a quad one loss, and not all quad ones are the same, of course. Like I said, Ohio State's not a tournament team, but I don't think it's Nebraska's really risking a dramatic fall because of this game. Right, this was a bit of a, I have good news and I have bad news. What do you want to hear first? You, right. you always go bad news first. Let's operate here in the positive, Jerry. Your biggest win of the night belongs to who? Memphis. You know, it's funny. We haven't talked about Memphis no, in, in a month and a half because they had that four-game losing streak that really hurt their tournament resume. But they've gotten hot since then. It's, it's like five out of seven. And they beat Florida Atlantic over the weekend. And now they have to play them again on the road. But it's like all of a sudden Memphis is starting to revive things. I mean, they beat East Carolina tonight. So the, it's not the fact that of the quality of their opponent tonight. But it's the fact that Memphis has gotten back to getting their legs under them and starting to look more like the team we saw earlier in the season, which was definitely an NCAA tournament team. Now they, they at least have a chance to give themselves a, a shot at an at-large bid. Their margin for error is pretty much gone for that. But there's 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 enough games left for Memphis to play themselves onto the bottom of the bracket if they need to. 57% from the field by Memphis in this win. Uh, think from where you're sitting, if you want to hand out a, a gold star or a ribbon on this night, who is the uh, object of your respect here on Thursday night? Well, I'm giving the mid-majors some love. Pat Kelsey, College of Charleston. Uh, clinched the CAA outright tonight, their first league title since uh, joining the conference back in 2013. And I think it's been 20 years since they've won a league championship overall. So this is a Charleston program that's got a terrific commitment from the local area. It's really one of the more, uh, one of the mid-major jobs that's really trended up in the last couple of years because of the perceived NIL and the community support. And now they're backing it up. So there's a whole lot of momentum at the mid-major level for Charleston now with a brand new CAA championship. Now, it may not mean much because of the new rules. It used to be you win your league outright, you know you're going to the NIT. That's not necessarily the case this year. So they still have to obviously try and win that conference tournament. They're not even guaranteed the NIT, but still a great day for Pat Kelsey and Charleston. Selection Sunday, 17 days away. Here's a look at Jerry's last four in and first four out entering the day. Colorado, Gonzaga, Utah, and Seton Hall are among Jerry's last four in. Providence, Oregon, Villanova, and Wake Forest are the first four out, according to Jerry Palm, as we welcome back Jerry and Adam. Adam, you talk about teams on the bubble here. Who's your bubble team to watch this weekend? Well, I like Gonzaga because they've got a, a big game coming up on Saturday at St. Mary's that they lost to earlier in the season. And for all their dominance in recent years, this is a Gonzaga team that Jerry says is on the bubble. He's the best of the best. And so this is suddenly a game that, that they go in with a lot of pressure. Their backs are against the wall, but it's a Gonzaga program that has made itself nationally relevant year in and year out. Uh, it, it's going to be a fascinating storyline on Saturday. 
Um, I know Jerry said that they're not definitely in, even if they win the game, but it would certainly help their case. So I'm really fascinated to see what happens on that one on Saturday. Jerry, you got your eye on Gonzaga for sure. They've made the NCAA tournament 24 straight times, uh, and they are among, though, right now on your last four in. Yeah, for Gonzaga, I've, I've been thinking for, oh, three, four weeks now that if Gonzaga doesn't beat St. Mary's at some point this season, they're not going to make the NCAA tournament. So if they want to be an at-large team, that means winning this weekend at St. Mary's. Otherwise, it means probably beating them to win the West Coast Conference tournament and getting the automatic qualifier. But if they get to Selection Sunday and their only win of note is the game at Kentucky and they have three losses to St. Mary's, I don't see how they make the NCAA tournament. Someone is going to move them out of the bracket in, the, in that scenario. So th that's real pressure that the Gonzaga hasn't seen in a while to try and make the NCAA tournament. But they've got to beat a team that beat them at home. They either got to beat them at their place or beat them at the neutral site. You said it, Akeem, 17 days yep. till Selection Sunday. Opinions are subject to change, as are resumes. So with our focus fixed, fellas, on this weekend, like where's my got to sit down, lock in full for the full tip here? Where's the game you're looking forward to most watching, Adam, this weekend? Uh, I think it's got to be Villanova Providence. When you showed those eight teams on Jerry's list, last four in, first four out, you got two of those teams of the eight. They're going head-to-head -head this weekend. What a job that Kim English has done at Providence because make no mistake about it, when Bryce Hopkins went down for the year, everybody thought Providence was done. What's happened since then is Devin Carter has blown up to be one of, if not the best player in the Big East. He's played his way into the first round of the NBA draft and he might play Providence into the NCAA tournament. Now, you got a Villanova team that was really struggling in the month of January. I mean, they were losing at a rapid clip, but they have since turned it around. They've won four of their last five, with UConn being their only loss. And Kyle Neptune is finally getting these guys to click. He brought in all those transfers at the end of the year last season. Got a brand new roster with a lot of experience trying to manage different personalities that he's never coached before. But they are playing their best basketball this season right now. This game, this weekend, at the building formerly known as the Dunk, it's a noon start. I have confidence the Providence, the Friar Faithful, will still be animated shall we say <laughs> it's going to be a great it's going to be a great atmosphere yeah go ahead sign me up twice for that one we know that the all-seeing eye of jerry palm misses nothing especially this time of year but who's got your undivided attention this weekend jerry well i really wanted to say gonzaga and st mary's and it will get my undivided attention when that game shows up but i want to talk a little bit about another team with a long ncaa uh, tournament appearance streak that's in trouble and that's michigan state Michigan State looked like they were going to be all right, and then they lose at home to Iowa, and they lose at home to Ohio State on back-to-back -back games this week, and now they get to go to Purdue. The great thing for Michigan State is if they can beat Purdue, all of a sudden that bubble doesn't seem so precarious for them. If not, they may have to win their last two games entering the Big Ten tournament to feel safe about continuing their long NCAA tournament appearance streak as, streak as well. Well, it grows near with each passing day, leaping or not. Jerry Palm, Adam Finkelstein, we'll talk to you guys soon. All right, here's a look at your Friday college hoops slate. Coming your way on CBS Sports Network, Bowling Green and Ohio. Fresno State, Nevada, also on our air. Plenty of high stakes hoop on the way in the days and weeks to come. Keep it locked on CBS Sports HQ for full highlights across the nation.